welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. One of the most fundamental problems I found while disassembling the Chinese lathe was this. The headstock isn't correctly fitted to the bed, so that the bevel is crooked when it's bolted down, and the top isn't level. The saddle has the same problem, which is potentially more serious. The carriage needs to be extremely rigid if the lathe is going to cut well, and this won't work if it isn't a snug fit to the bed. Instead of three flat surfaces in contact holding the carriage steady, it's only in contact at three points. The first step to understanding how to fix this is to measure exactly how bad the problem is. A great tool for measuring this kind of issue accurately is a set of slip gauges or gauge blocks, and I just happen to have received a set from Banggood for review. Full disclosure, Banggood have sent me this set free of charge to do what I want with in exchange for doing a review. This is the box it was shipped in, which isn't really adequate packaging to ship precision instruments internationally. It looks like the box took a hefty ding to the corner, but the case is still intact and there's no sign of any damage to the contents. The blocks are all individually wrapped in protective paper and underneath they're coated with corrosion resistant film. The blocks won't be accurate or work properly while the film is there, so they need to be thoroughly cleaned. Wiping them down with kerosene seems to work pretty effectively. The most important surfaces to clean are the functional ends, which define the dimension the block is calibrated to. You can tell which faces these are because they're lapped to a mirror finish, unlike the other four ground faces. This is a 60mm gauge block, so the distance between the two lap faces should be really close to 60mm. The kerosene seems pretty good at removing the protective film, though it's possible they'll need to be more carefully cleaned to get the best accuracy. To explain why these surfaces have to be clean, I'll need a second gauge block. This block is a lot shorter, but the lap faces are still exactly the same shape and size as the first. When two of the lap faces are pressed together, with no air trap between them, they should stick together in a way that's called ringing. I've never done this before, and I don't really know what I'm doing. It looks like this face isn't quite clean enough, but the other end looks cleaner. Ringing blocks together like this is vital for combining them to make the correct size for measurement tasks. To get the set ready for use, they all need to be unwrapped and cleaned, but fortunately I learned a trick for this from this old Tony. The clasps on the box are really flimsy and haven't survived the journey well. I probably need to replace them. Let's take a closer look at the lathe and see how we can use them. I'm going to start with the carriage, but first I need to clear some space by removing the compound. The compound needs to be drawn back to reveal the two screws holding it to the saddle before unscrewing them. Once the two screws are removed, the compound just lifts off. I was planning to use a second-hand surface gauge with a test indicator to take measurements of the surface of the saddle, but I don't turn out to have flexible enough fittings to mount the indicator low enough. Instead I've improvised a surface gauge using a round steel plate turned flat and parallel, and attached a magnetic dial indicator stand. Mounted vertically, the indicator can measure differences in height relative to the flat surface of the bed at various points on the saddle. When fitted correctly, the movement of the cross slide should be parallel to the bed, so points on the surface of the saddle should be all the same height. This saddle isn't fitted correctly, so the top surface slopes down towards the back of the bed. With the point of the indicator aligned with the bevel, I set the indicator scale to zero. Running between the centre point of the bevel and the centre point of contact area on the far side shows a difference of 1.8mm. That gives me a rough idea of the difference, but the way it's currently resting on the bed makes it difficult to be accurate. It makes more sense to measure on the slideways of the cross slide, as that's the surface that should be level, so I'm removing the cross slide itself to expose those ways. To try and get a more accurate reading, I'm going to try and raise the saddle until it's parallel, and measure the gap. The hold down plate at the back needs to be removed by taking out these three screws, so that this end of the saddle can be lifted up. I also need to remove these large screws at the front which attach the saddle to the apron, so the saddle is free to move. I'm going with the assumption that if the saddle is fitted correctly, it will fit snugly to the bevel, and the cross slide will be parallel to the surface of the bed. Pushing down on the bevel forces the saddle onto the bevel and lifts the far side up as expected, but it's unstable. When the cross slide is level, an indicator will show no change as it's moved across the bed, but to keep it stable I need to support the back side of the bed with something the correct size. 
One way to do this would be to prop the back up with something just the right size to hold the saddle level. Then I can refer to the size of this support to tell me how much the saddle needs to be adjusted. This is exactly the kind of measurement that gauge blocks are good for. I know the back was about 1.8mm lower, so I'll start with something close to that. The gauge block set has a 1.8mm block, so that'll be a start. The gauge block fits neatly underneath the saddle and seems to be stable even though the back is now only supported at this single point. It's now much more obvious that there's a higher area in the middle of the slide, but the endpoints where it contacts the bed are now around the same level. Unfortunately I can't measure more accurately with this gauge block set, but to explain why I need to go a bit deeper into how gauge blocks are used. Before I go into that I want to take a look at the underside of the saddle and think about how it might be adjusted and improved to fit the bed. This rectangular area is clearly intended to rest on the bed, though at the moment only the rear edge makes contact. The most straightforward fix seems likely to be to attach some shim stock to this area, but I'm not in a hurry to make a decision. The area is about 100mm by 10mm wide, so I'll take that down for reference. A gauge block set like this is designed to measure a range of sizes with an accuracy of 0.01mm. To cover the range from 1mm to 100mm with one gauge block for each value would take nearly 10,000 gauge blocks, which would be absurdly expensive to make and very bulky to store. To make them more affordable and easy to use, actual sizes are composed by ringing usually 3 or 4 blocks together. For example, 1.01 plus 1.7 plus 4 plus 60 gives 66.71mm. It should be fairly obvious that blocks below a certain size would be too fragile to be used, so all of the smaller sizes are additions to 1mm blocks. The top row contains values between 1mm and 1.19mm in increments of a hundredth, then starting on the second row is a similar range in increments of a tenth. You can take two blocks from these two ranges and make any decimal fraction. The trouble is, every block is at least 1mm thick, so the shortest stack you can make is just over 2mm, meaning you can't freely measure to an accuracy of 0.01mm below 2mm. The test stack can be accurate to 0.01mm, though these calipers are only accurate to within a couple of hundredths. The distance I'm trying to measure under the saddle is just over 1.8mm, and there's simply no way I can make a stack of 1.85mm or any other hundredth size around this dimension. For an example where I can use a gauge block stack, let's take a look at the tailstock base. The difference in height is over 2.5mm, so I'll start by making a stack with the 1.5mm block and the 1mm block. The two ring together easily enough, and the base is stable with the stack supporting one corner. The back of the tailstock is still over a tenth of a millimetre too low, so I need to swap the 1.5mm block for a 1.6. With the slightly taller stack, the back is still a bit lower, but significantly less than a tenth of a millimetre, so to adjust the height I replace the 1mm block with a 1.05mm block from the top row, to make 1.65mm. This is now pretty close to the right height, but the tailstock base is too rough to try and get a more accurate measurement, and it looks like the dial indicator stand is having trouble holding steady too. As a final check, let's verify the size of this stack with a micrometer. It's reading a few microns over, but that's because the zero of this micrometer is a few microns over zero. The stack looks correct, within the accuracy of the micrometer. Learning how to use gauge blocks has been fun, and they've been really useful for getting a better idea of how much the lathe needs to be adjusted. Thanks very much to Banggood for sending me this set for free. If you'd like to support my channel, and help make more videos like this, the Banggood link in the description will give me a small reward if you use it to buy. The next step will be deciding how to make the adjustment, whether by adding material to one side or taking it off the other. I think there are some advantages to adding material in the form of fixed shims, but if you have any experience with this kind of change, I'd like to hear about it. The next video will be more work on this lathe, so keep watching. I love you all.